Yeah. Okay, so hey everyone. Um, we're gonna get started soon. I'm super excited. Um, we'll be just an FYI, we're recording this event. So I'm letting you all know now in case anyone is uncomfortable with that or doesn't want to appear in the recording, let us know. Um, you can always reach out if you have any concerns about that. Uh, keep an eye on the chat. Um, we'll be posting some links and info and maybe some other shenanigans. So please feel free to use it as well. I am Brian and I will be guest hosting the event for you today on behalf of AIX Design, which if you don't know, is an independent organization and a community of geeky designers, creative techies, and curious minds who are exploring the intersection of design, AI, and machine learning, and data. So today we're ecstatic to be hosting Soyun Park um, for the workshop that you all came here for. Um, and also thanks everyone for like, you know, your patience during the technical difficulties. We're definitely bootstrapping a bit. Um, but yeah, so you've all come here for the workshop with the exceptional title, Composing Chromatic Resonances, Turn Images into Short Musical Scores. Um, and this is a part of our AI Playground program led by um, AI Design's very own program lead, Ambika, aka Computational Mama. Havi So Yoon and Ambika. Okay. So, founder of audiovisual community uh, studio RGB Dog, So Yoon Park is a multidisciplinary artist and designer from South Korea based in The Hague, the Netherlands. Um, with her work, she explores how technology influences human functioning from the individual levels of physical movement and relationships to the social level of architecture and politics. Often in collaboration with sound artists, her work takes the shape of videos, installations, and audiovisual performances. By making use of new media and tech, her work investigates the border between the digital world and reality, which as we all know is getting thinner and thinner every day. So Yoon has performed and had her work exhibited at several media art festivals, cultural venues, and educational institutes. And I'm personally a big fan and super excited to see what gems we're gonna throw our way today. So big ups to you, So Soyun, very glad that you're with us today. Um, you can find Soyun and more of her work on the IG socials, Soyun Park with three R's, and her website, Soyun Park with the same name, and I'm gonna drop that in the chat. Thank you so much for introduction. Uh, should I take it over from here now? Um, one last thing and then I'll oh, yeah, sure. give you the stage. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so this workshop marks the ninth and final event of the AI Playground program led by Ambika and funded by Stimulating Funds Creative Industry. It is part of the sound theme um, among our four main program themes, including image, moving image, music or sound, body or poses, and text or words. Under each theme, we've been hosting one workshop like today's and one behind the scenes of this talk. Um, you can follow our social channels and keep an eye out for it. Um, on our event pride page for any upcoming programming and events this year. Um, and then I'm going to leave some more links for you to keep an eye out on all those things in the chat. Also, um, we'll make the explorations and learnings of each AI playground topic accessible to the wider community with a public guide. So you can see, you can find these guides on our websites, uh, which we um, also share some insights from on our social channels. Each guide contains an introduction to each discipline, inspiration, projects, and creative suggestions for how the viewer can expand on the subject further. The event participants will also have the chance to provide suggestions on what they'd like to see in the guide. Additionally, there's gonna be an online graduation show later in the year um, where all the program participants will have the chance to display the work that they've been developing in the sessions or any work that was inspired by the events. Um, more details will be announced on the respective Slack channels, and you'll be receiving an email on how to join a Slack space shortly after the talk today. Um, please don't hesitate to ping Ambika privately if you'd like to contribute to the guide or the graduation show in any way. And I'm leaving a link to the Slack channel in the chat as well. Okay, so without further ado, I'd like to leave the stage to So Yoon. Take it away. Hi again. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, 
and thank you for ARX, ARX Design for inviting me here. Um, I think we, we all should check out their website. They have like a lot of good archives with different types of um, materials that is related to AI. Uh, my name is Soyeon Park and I'm from South Korea and I, I, listen, I live in the Netherlands, in The Hague. Uh, today I actually taught children AI, so I might speak like I'm talking to children, but it's not, it's not, uh, I am uh, looking down or anything, yeah, please uh, just, I'm letting you know first. So this workshop is called Composing Short Chromatic Chrom Attic resonances. Thank you, Ambika, for naming it so beautifully. And yes. So today, first, I would like to let you know what we're going to do throughout today. So, first of all, I will introduce who I am and what this workshop is about. And I will introduce some of the projects from me um, I explored AI with. So, um, I like to approach artificial intelligence as a um, collaboration tool rather than uh, the tool that it creates outcomes. So I would like to introduce some of the projects that I made uh, in that way. Uh, we are going to write one line statement with a context. So in this matter, we will write a text, um, a, a little text that we can put into the AI tools. Um, first of all, text to, text to image tool, and then second, video to audio tool. Um, and I there I simplified it completely so we can do in this workshop two hours of workshop. Otherwise, it's gonna take some time. Uh, but I give you all the resources that are original, so you can also test it out and change the parameters by yourself when you have more time. Um, and then now finally, we will learn how to use that as a resource. Um, the the final snippet of the sound. Uh, to create your own music and I'm not a musician and I don't make music but I'm a visual artist and sometimes when I make visuals I think that I need some sound or I need some music for that visuals uh, this workshop is for for you um, and then we will we will share and in the end party I mean online party uh, congratulations on our um, done <laughs> Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you some questions. Just curious, where are you from and where are you right now? Um, in the chat, if you can drop it, um, I would like to just know. Please drop in the chat, everyone. Ah, there are so many places. Oh, Chicago, Utrecht, and let's say Germany. Whoa. Barcelona, Rotterdam, south of Brazil. Ah, oh. Shanghai, grew up in Melbourne and now in Los Angeles. Wow. Ah, traveler, Istanbul, amazing. Detroit, China. China and Rotterdam, The Hague. Oh, hello, neighbor. Berlin, Amsterdam. Hi, you recall uh, Seattle and Amsterdam. Oh, also Utrecht again. A lot of um, Dutch based and Netherlands based people. Thank you for your texts. Next, have you used text to image AI models yourself? Uh, for example, Mid Journey, Disco Diffusion, or DALI? Um, if you can name it also, that's that would be great. Tanya, I have used Mid Journey. No, yes, yes. Mid Journey, Dali. Oh, so Stable Diffusion. It's quite new. Very cool. Dali, Dali Mini. Dali Mini is so easy to use. I, I, I like the accessibility of that. Also, mid journey is the stable diffusion, Kathleen. Francisco Dali mid journey, speak and stable diffusion. Thank you for your answers. Today, we are going to use VQ Gun X clip. Um, I just really like this model because 
it's so simple it, it's fast and obscure and vague it's not too clear uh, but the positive thing is we can learn it very quickly and um, outputs the uh, make an output very quickly so we are gonna use that today um, and then last question have you made music for your visuals please answer if you have no it's good never no yes <laughs> Not with AI, no. Not very successfully. Never, always stuck, no. Ah, oh, great, nobody have used that. <laughs> Which means that we can learn it today, amazing. But yes, otherwise, okay, that's also good. So, um, in the end, we will get a very short sound output and we will use the free software to cut them into pieces and put them into pieces or also make uh, compositions. Um, so we will do it in the end of the day. That's our goal today. So as I introduced me before, I'm an inter interdisciplinary artist and designer, and I'm also educate. Um, in schools. Um, like I said uh, earlier today, I taught children from 13 years to 18 years old AI, and they learned it quite quickly. Um, it's like really faster than my friends, actually. Uh, they just learn it so quick um, because they grew up in a digital environment, I guess. Um, I'm fascinated by technology and critical about technology, too. I'm worried about the future to be honest, but I, I try to stay in the positive mode. Um, so RGB Dog is um, a creative studio that I founded. Uh, it's, it's working with tech enthusiasts and critically engaged with technology by playing, collaboration, and hosting educational programs. Um, and one of the things that we've done, and it's still going, is a volumetric interview. Rules you want to apply yeah. to the to the layout and see how it looks, and then making them into rules for the rest of the publication. Yeah. But then, you know, yeah, there's coded rules, but then you can open them up again as well. I mean, mm. if your physical interface is not a mouse and a keyboard, it also becomes a bit strange, like, oh, which is which? And like, you don't have this blind habit, so you don't really know what each button is going to do. And for example, with that uh, tool, we once went to Copenhagen and did a workshop where we made physical games. So really like throwing a ball and crawling over the floor and super physical like body type things. Yeah, you just uh, quickly saw the snippet of volumetric interviews. Um, it is made with technologies, Leo and um, organization Korea. Uh, we interviewed Amsterdam based a group hackers and designers they forced a great community around the world by exploring technology so uh, for volumetric interviews we are interviewing people who are working creatively with technology um, and foster communities and encourage being together with a positive use of technology um, i would like to introduce several works like two works of mine uh, which i um, I actively used artificial intelligence as a concept, both um, as also output. So one of them is Fantasia Realism. It's made in this year, um, April, uh, co-directed with Wells Goodness. It was an audiovisual performance that I will explain a little bit more about it later. Uh, and this one was a Wunderkammer 10.0. It was made in 2021. Um, it's a fictional film unfolding humans' inequality with a perspective of artificial intelligence. Um, so we uh, we made a story together uh, with Yerim Ki and Inu Chong um, that artificial intelligence as a protagonist uh, looking around the human lives and uh, reveal some parts of uh, our society. Um, this one is actually going to be screened um, in Cologne next month and then also London this month in, in coming weeks. Um, and then this is a little 
prize. I quickly put it there and we got awarded for a special jury prize. It was surprising because this is very experimental film and South Korean uh, festival decided to give to us. I will show you a quick snippet of uh, the part that artificial intelligence is imagining what it is, the future. Um, Studio 지하도의 길목이 극도로 뒤얽히며 이어져서 언덕 아래로 수렴된다. 모퉁이를 돌 때마다 그곳으로 향하는 지하 도굴이 나타나고 또 새로이 나타나고 반복된다. 이방인이 되돌아 나갈 길을 잃는 것은 하나의 작은 방이 다음 방으로 그를 이끌 때 자꾸만 길목이 원을 그리거나 격자로 교차되기 때문만은 아니다. 이 공간의 크기가 순전히 너무나 거대하기에 뒤틀린 서킷이 그저 너무 진을 빠지게 하기 때문이기도 하다. 우리 JCB에서도 기지국의 도움을 받아 전파를 차단할 수 있다면. Thank you for watching that snippet. Um, as you saw, it's made in made last year. Or it just came out the AI tools, um, and it was more vague at the time. I used BQ Gun, and there was a model that it connects from one prompt to another. Um, and for this one, it, it made sense to use the BQ gun as uh, the visual creator because in the film, the AI was imagining um, actually what was going to happen and he, his, he, his imagination was in there. So the next one that I would like to uh, go deeper in is uh, fantasy realism. It was premiered at Rewire Festival this year, and there's a short video of that I will show you. Actually, Tanya made the video, Tanya who's in the workshop. Fantasia Realism is a theatrical audiovisual performance exploring uh, surrealism and the stream of unconsciousness. We wanted to explore the surrealism methodology collaboration with artificial intelligence. So there were two types of different texts to create a script. So one of them is a horror film script and the other one is children's book script. I'm not going anywhere. I mean, I have thought. May, for example, for you were going. You were. I'm going. It is talking about death and it is talking about dying people, but in a very sweet way. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, so as I explained in the video, it was about um, exploring unconsciousness. So we found the connection between how artificial intelligence creates images from the big data set from reality um, connection in connection to human streams. So we all 
every day collect the data, I mean, data uh, in our brain. So what happens in the reality is recorded. And um, in, my, in our dream, it just comes out quite uh, randomly sometimes or unconsciously. Um, and then we found the connection to that uh, with these AI models. So uh, we made a whole theatrical performance out of it. And I would like to show you some of the parts that how I use the elements in there. First of all, uh, the script was written by AI, but I mean, curated by artist us. Um, so it started to spit out um, some interesting text from the two different types of text, the horror film text and the ch children's book. Um, and then second, um, it created um, visuals, which I also curated in the end. And the third, uh, as you see here, there is a little plush um, that was made by humans, but inspired by AI output. So it was a quite um, different disciplines all connected and co collaborated. Um, so this one is actually, this video is made by Peter. Uh, this is actually mock-up text. The actual video is not ready yet, so um, be aware this is just a draft. Uh, but in the middle, there is some interesting. So for example, I also engage myself in the dream mate we made, um, and I move as a performer. But maybe in the very beginning, I will show you how the performance is looking. So we involve also different senses like dry eyes and you can smell it, you can feel it around it. And also perfume to create uh, the environment that people are um, coming in and feeling like, wow, this is really another space. This is all pre-recorded and pre-published material. It's not a work of the following composition. It all, all was by the last authors. No one was more important to the way we thought about the world. No one were more, dash. I'm not going to go into the thought process. The thought was simple. Tell me what you want. Let me know what we're doing. Yes, so um, here the voice was also artificial intelligence. It sounds like a ch child. Uh, also, the text is written by AI, beautifully written. Um, and then in the middle, I use also, uh, I will quickly show you how I quickly used AI created images in the background. Um, okay. 
and skip a bit, sorry. The last part I want to show you is here. You're going to be called the one and only, but you're not going wrong. The only one is going to be a little hill. Thank you for watching the snippet again. I hope it was amusing. Um, so what, what I, the reason why I showed you this a bit different snippets was uh, to show you how I used artificial intelligence in a different matter. So the last part that you saw was um, how text is becomes an image in the background. And then also um, the images as it is um, combined with the reality like, um, fireworks. So I, I try to really think of different methods to engage or collaborate with artificial intelligence. So if I um, introduce you the details, so uh, we had like this script coming out um, and you see this is all pre-recorded and pre-published material. Um, we we curated what uh, GPT, GPT Neo spit out. So, for example, uh, this one we worked with um, intern at the time, but he was very good at researching. Um, so he becomes a researcher. Uh, Kaylin, I don't know if she is here, uh, but Kaylin did a lot of different researches for us, changing the parameters of epoch and the temperature, and to see if. Uh, the texts work for us and then we picked some interesting part of the text um, and put it in the script and made a narrative uh, so we human as humans we can relate and these are the two sources that we call combined with so the first one is the curtains um, it's a film that it is about murdering so in combination with the very hungry caterpillar, which is a beautiful little cute children's book by Eric Carl. Um, it's it made such a horrible or cute story, like talking about death, but um very in a sweet way. So then uh, we also collected all the AI create images. I use Disco Diffusion for this and thought of how I can engage that into, into the work instead of just making it stay there in the background. So we thought of how to place that in the space. So not just the wall, but also the curtains because we wanted to be um, theatrical. So there was like some settings that we um, engaged like dry eyes, for example, and yeah. Um, and for the sound AI, um, so this is what we're going to learn today. I find this super interesting, the interdisciplinarity of artificial intelligence use. So right now you saw uh, from text to image. And this image has become video. 
um, it's compiled and become video. And these videos can become sound because there is a model called SpecVQ gun that I found uh, made by amazing um, researchers that it helps us analyze the video. So this research is done by Kaylin also, but I will play the videos. So I think every video is his video, but we can hear what AI um, analyzed. Sorry. Amazon server. Beautiful, right? Um, let's go back. And... Yes, so we're going to learn how to do this today. Um, so which means that if you have a video and you want to add sound to it and you don't know where to start, you can start with maybe asking AI. Um, so first of all, we can start with um, writing a text, which you can go to the workshop resources link that I made if everyone goes there right now. And then I think it's this one. So since uh, you might not have a video yet or you want to make something else, so I would like to start with some text and then we can go to the video. And then from video that it is made by VQGON, we can go to the sound. Hey, so Yun, could you post, post the uh, link in the chat? Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. Thank you. Yeah, Aina said, I work a lot with visuals, but sound is a struggle. Yeah, for me too. And I can ask my sound artist friends, but not every time, right? So I always struggle with what I should do. So maybe I can quickly show you uh, one video that I cut, uh, make the sound. Um, it's, it's in, it was in collaboration with, I mean, it was in, in the commission uh, from Meta. And then I made this video with touch designer and the sound I made it by myself. Oh, there is no sound. Oh, yeah. Yes, so this was also uh, not starting from scratch, but I had like an audio source and then I cut it into pieces, made it long or short, which we will do it today. So let's go. Uh, so are you all in the link now? Yeah, so first assignment. I would like to work with the context. I, I would like us to think about the, what the context can be that you can work with. So the first assignment is, let's make a small one line statement that is visually imaginable, critical, and poetic. 
Um, so for example, I found this good example it's online um, on the Monash University. Uh, the bath is empty in a flooded house where the, the ashes on all of our hands. It was actually climate change poetry that um, the artist Amanda wrote, but I thought it could be a good example. It could be simple, but also with the context. So let's start with that and we can share it in Etherpad. So if you go back to the link, the resources link, uh, on the assignment one, one line segment, you can click the Etherpad page. And then you can see my message in there. Etherpad is like Google Docs, but I wanted to try something other than Google Docs. So we can all go there and say, Zipperish. it's like anonymous. Oh, I mean, I wrote my name there, but so please just write anything. You can start with anything, or if you are if you are ready, then you can also type it there. Uh, we can see it all in the in in a minute. I will play some music so we can just wait on that. It's safe to just let go. 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 Safe to just let go. There's always a first time. How do I know for sure? There's always a first time. How do I know for sure? It's safe to just let go. 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 It's safe to just let go.
It seems to be almost done. Thank you so much. I love how they are jamming together, like connecting two different sentences sometimes, and it makes another sentence. And in the color, they look gorgeous. Thank you. So let's start making images. Okay. So the next step is using the very simplified VQCon clip make a video for the statement. So we're going to use the statement as a prompt and ask AI to create the videos. Uh, but first of all, let's go to resources folder. I'm in the page. And there is assignment to text to video using the very simplified one. So this one is I made what I made for children. Uh, but I also added original here. So this is original. I will have a look at the original first. So for the people who are not uh, familiar with Google Colab, Google Colab is the service that uh, we can remotely access uh, to Google services. So Google's high quality GPU that we don't own, unfortunately. Some people, Tanya, my studio mate, who's over there, she owns 3090. <laughs> um, I own 2060. <laughs> Uh, so this is a VQCon clip, uh, which I showed you earlier through my other works. Um, so these are uh, the tasks that we have to do. So first we uh, in install the libraries and select models to download. And text, you put the text prompt here and uh, set up width and height and then fire up the AI. So Maybe for us it's easy, but for this workshop, I also made it short version of it. Otherwise it constantly keeps going. So if we go to very simplified one, <laughs> then uh, you will see the sketch that I made for children. So here you can do, oh, sorry, it's in Korean. I will change it to English. So what you will see is the original version of this. So first you have to go to file and save a copy in your drive and open the copy in your drive. I will uh, give like one or two minutes to wait for you. Yeah, sorry that you have to have Google's account, but um, that's the only way for now. 1650. <laughs> it's 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 the best one, I think, from that time, from 1650 time. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, do you do we all copy in your drive and do, can we open that right now? Could you give a sign like yes so no. yes Great. Let's connect. okay. We go um, you can click connect here, but you can also say, okay, press this button, run cell and it's gonna ask you, it requires high RAM. Um, I don't. I didn't subscribe for Cola Pro. Cola Pro uh, allows you to stay longer than uh, free users, and uh, the subscription model varies from 
and I think 10 something euros to 50 euros a month. So if this one, if this pops up, comes up, say, okay. And it's going to ask you one more time that it wants to connect to my Google Drive. Then I have to give the permission so it can write the file on my Google Drive. Permit this notebook to access your Google Drive files. Yes, connect to Google Drive. Then I just click my account and allow. So the first installation will take around five minutes. So let's be patient. And you will see the procedure. I have a question here. Uh, when working in this AI software, is it private or public? Good question. Thank you. Um, it's private. The Google Colab that you have um, as a copy in your drive, it's a private. Uh, Midjourney is public, yes. Um, I think Dali also owns the output. I think. Um, also, they have like a filtering system. So Dali and Stable Diffusion, they have words filtering so like something about mother for example they do a uh, filter so sometimes i mean most of the times it's just it's just nonsense uh they what they filter um i think ambika recently posted about that could you share a little bit about it please oh yeah uh thanks Soyun. yeah uh, i mean they just want to be like ethical for the sake of ethical so they just have a bunch of words which are filtered like of course all the profanities but also words that can be associated with violence so like cut you know like or uh, sometimes mm -hmm. even blood or something like that so but it's very strange because like I can still write uh, man in full armor with gun in war battle scene it'll still give me something and obviously that is very violent too but if i would say iranian women cut hair it would immediately mm -hmm. not let me uh, take that prompt so that's what i have faced with dali and uh, mid journey both um, so i then moved to collab notebook back to collab notebook which doesn't have those issues um, yeah. yeah oh yes please tanya so and is the the Google version not filtering at all? Because I also had the experience yeah, with Midjourney because I placed a prompt colorful vagina and vagina got <laughs> totally cut out. Couldn't yeah. use the word, and I was like, what? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's no, the same. But yeah, is it... I've been okay. Like I've written phallic and things like that, and it's like tried to do something, uh, but. Uh, uh, and I think one of our previous uh, guests for uh, BTS, uh, Emily, she's done some really beautiful ones with the queer AI. And uh, uh, in fact, that talk has mention of these things. So like uh, uh, many of her images were in, with clip and VQGAN, but they are like very sexual looking and very sensual looking. So those have been okay. Oh my God, Nadia, are we allowed to talk about all this on the AI, AI design? Uh, but... Uh, uh, but absolutely okay. yes <laughs> thanks <laughs> uh, but yeah she's posted something here it's interesting uh, she's like the whiz with all the info about everything <laughs> yeah thank you for the discussion and also the link Nadia I see I will put this in our resources so you can access it later too. Um, I think by now you have finished the installation. Is it done for you? Yeah, that's great. Okay, so now it's time to put the text in there. 
I made it super simple like this, but you can easily track it in the original um, original sketch. Like this is, I'm, I'm not looking at it, original one. I just got rid of all the possibilities to uh, change the parameters, but it's the same thing. So uh, let's put the text here. Can I bring anyone's text from our collect? Oh, the colors changed. Also, oh, because people looked. Oh, I don't know. I would like to choose a thousand ship above the wooden cottage. I just like to see the ship. Um, if you are done with typing it here, then press run cell. And it's just done in a second because it's just uh, telling the just telling the algorithm that this is the text. Um, so the next step is firing up the AI. And you're welcome to click it again. And it says it's going to take around 10 minutes. Let me know if things don't work or any questions so far. So for this time, for children, what I ask them to do is uh, to draw what you imagine. <laughs> so you can get a piece of paper and then imagine by your drawing um, what you, you will see. And then compare with the output later. Now you see the first image came out, which started from noise. I'll play some music. So you want to take Kathleen's question? Oh, Can yes. you see these experiments? Right yes. So in the end, wait, I'll put the music down a bit. So you see this limit, little images, it's going to go away, uh, but you will merge images into video and you will download it. If you want to save individual images, you can right click and save image as. Uh, if you close it, um, it's, it just leaves it like that in your drive unless you change something. Uh, but just in case that it closes by accident, um, I recommend you to save it. Save images.
how long how many images does it make is there a setting to alter that yes there is a setting to alter that although i um delete the setting here um it's gonna stop at iterations thousand hundred so i means iterations how many iterations it makes so far let's go back to the original mm. so if you click double click then you will see all the code that it is in there i'm looking where i was So if I explain a little bit about the original book, um, so here there's a text and there's a width and a height. Uh, images interval, interval is like the images that you see in the pages. So now you see this frequently, but you can make it more frequent with this number. And you can even put the initial image. Um, so if you connect to the Google Drive and you will see Oh, I, I haven't connected to this drive, so let's see. If you go to the left side, there's like files. Since I, we gave the permission, um, the Google Drive permission, you will see all those files in the drive. So many stuff. And how you find the location of this uh, picture or initial image is, you go right click and then do copy path. You go right click in the image and then copy path. And you put it in the initial image here like this. Oh, this is actually Google Doc, but if you find your image, then you can copy and paste here. And target images, uh, target images that it's from initial image, it goes to target images. It doesn't work very well, um, so I never really use it. I've used it for testing, but I think technology is not there yet. No problem. I'm looking where I saw the iteration universe. Hmm. It's end of the day. <laughs> oh, max iterations maybe. Oh, I see. Hmm. Is there a return or on the function if one accidentally deleted some images? Uh, what do you mean by delete some images? Uh, I'm not sure whether I follow where to find the images in Google Drive. Oh, Google, the group, sorry. Images are in, not in the Google Drive yet. We're gonna make a video for the next step. When the iteration numbers goes 1100, then it's gonna be over and this shows checkbox. And we're going to go to the next one, which um, automates merging images into video and it downloads it on your drive. So if you have a file in your drive called video.mp4, it's going to override it 
so please <laughs> delete or change the name i'm sorry uh yeah i made it name it to video.mp4 Um, Esther, if you are struggling with something, please let me know. Deleted images by accident. Okay, mine is done. Deleted the first iterations by accident. Um, I don't know if it's even possible to delete the iterations by accident. Um, I don't think so. So you don't have to worry. Maybe you have to scroll it somewhere on top. Maybe. Um, because there are two scrolls. One is in this cell and the other one is the entire thing. So if you maybe go back, go back, it's there. Okay, once you are done, you can compare that with your drawing. <laughs> Just show it to us. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, there was an X that you pressed. It's gone. Um, could you press this one and see it runs? If it doesn't, we can start it from the back. Um, I'll, I mean the number three. And if it if it runs, then you are fine. So this cell enables uh, merging images into videos, into video, and we can download it. I mean, it's going to be automatically downloaded in your drive as a video.mp4. It's generating a video. Okay, that's great news. In the meantime, I have a question. Yes, please. Can you mute your sound, so you? Oh, yes, yeah, true. So I was wondering, this AI has uh, information about, yeah, what does a sheep look like? What does a cottage look like? Uh, and are we activating AI at the moment? How does it work? Is it like Googling what, how does a sheep look like? Or how do I have to uh, see this process? And the second question is like, I talked with an artist uh, who was scared that AI would take over his style. And if I would now use his name, like a uh, thousand sheep above a cottage in the style of naming this artist, he was like, no, 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 don't put my name there. Uh, yeah, how does it work then? Am I feeding the system there or? Yes, thank you for the question, Tanya. Um, so when we did the first step, it was installing um, the data set, uh, the clip, um, which was built uh, built by billions of images on the internet. And um, yeah, you're right that the ethical part of it, it's still questionable because we are 
not sure if it was collecting um, artists' paintings or artists' uh, works with copyright um, without consent. So most of the artworks on the internet, it didn't have the consent of, um, okay, I give permission uh, for the big data set to be um, compiled with my artwork with my name on it. Um, so it's a very, very um, big issue right now. Um, so there is even like a movement that okay let's not use the artist's name in the in the end um or like asking dali or the commercial commercial softwares not to include um, their style and uh, so it's under the process of um policy making uh, i believe that it's going to change like um gdpr for example i i always find that as an example and uh, that you have to you can access the website only if you agree or your cookies to be um, collected or not so those things it could be i think uh, generalized in the near future maybe when you post something on the internet you can give consent or uh, put it in the metadata um, or something like that and um, so yeah it's a big topic at the moment anyone else would like to talk about that and because i know you are um, expert on this topic no it's you're very right it's a bit like tricky uh which is i i just put stuff on instagram but i would not use it for an actual project anyway because it's immediately like taking the line style color style everything from you know artists dead or alive and when they're alive it's even worse because you're i mean it's like all these really uh, artists who are like us creators sitting and putting stuff on like an art station or whatever and you know slaving away with their pen tablets for hours and we just like pick it up <clears throat> and I think there was somebody who won a prize right and there was some news item of some guy won. but yeah uh, I yeah. think uh, so Yun is quite updated and this is how they do it as you said uh, Tanya like they, they pre-collect it and then uh, out of that you pick it so that itself is pretty biased. Like it will have Van Gogh and uh, and uh, and I don't know Picasso more easily than it would have a Mrinalini Mukherjee or a uh, you know H S Raja who's an Indian artist. So <clears throat> I mean that is a different kind of bias, but uh, this is definitely a, more of an ethical thing. See there you go, Nadia with her links very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah actually i was reading this today yeah there was one artist whose name was used for like million times for generation uh, there was an interview of that yeah if you find it back maybe you can share it also in the chat yeah no, i yeah. put it here yeah very good coffee yeah all the youtube Thank tutorials you. use his name also right is that why you prefer Soyun to use uh, VQGAN because it's less uh, in similarity? <clears throat> yeah, also, uh, I'm not sure if I really like the current trend of making the most realistic images mm. as possible. Like we did with photography, it was already flipped yeah. over um, the whole fine arts. Um, uh, I like the Fikugan has quite characteristics, but not anyone's. So, yeah. Um, before going to the next question, I would like to go to the next step because we are quite running out of time. And um, so I think it must have been done. So mine is done. It's saved in my drive. Um, so you can close this one if it's done, if, if it's done. And the next one we'll go to is, let's see. Finally, the sound. So using the very simplified spec VQ gun, make a sound for the video. So also I put spec VQ gun, everything here. It's a video to audio section of the resource page. Uh, there is the original made by Vladimir and it was it's written everything about it like here you see playing harp and it was analyzing in this sound <laughs> so
So it's detecting what's in the image. And I really like this because not as the final product, but it just gives um, quite interesting start. So um, you can use it as a resource for a larger scale uh, because it's also very, very vague. Like the image that we made just now will be so, so vague. It's not too realistic. So it's going to make vague sound as well. And ah, someone shared the uh, image. Oh, yeah, maybe I should also <laughs> put it somewhere to share. Um, okay, next step. We go to this model, but very, very simplified again. So click the very simplified Google Collaboratory. And this is also made for children, so it's uh, very easy. But this is exactly the same as the original, which is this one. And usually you put the video file here. So like I showed you earlier, you can copy your path and then put it here and then run this cell. But for this one, it will automatically detect. So let's start. Oh. OK, it says there isn't too many sessions. So I think because I'm using the free version of it, I need to close the other sessions. It says manage the sessions. And I will I will just um, quit all the sessions. It says quit, quit. Do we also save it as a separate copy? Uh, if you oh yeah, right. I forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah, file. So this one is original that. Um, I made this simplified, so we have to copy this. So save a copy in the drive. And you will be in the copy. Then you can connect as usual what you did, like what you did just before. You have to install the libraries and ne necessary things that it, this lab needs and connect to Google Drive. Give permission. Yeah, this is going to take another five minutes. In the meantime, I will make a place for you to share if you like the music.
So in the link that I just sent you, I think you have the access to share your work. You can just copy and paste, also drag and drop, I think. Let me, please let me know if you don't have the access. Uh, do we just drag and drop it on top of that or because it doesn't seem to work if that's the case? Yeah, it doesn't. We can just drag and drop. No. Oh. Hmm. Uh, I couldn't get it to work. But, but I'm on uh, Firefox. Maybe do I have to be on Chrome or something? It shouldn't be that case um, let me find a way sorry yeah i think it's a matter of going uh, right on the top and then click edit and then it says are you sure you want to edit because people can see your name and you click click okay and then you can do it thanks that worked oh thank you tanya Okay, I think by now we have all uh, installed it, I believe, and you can fire up the AI. So right now you don't have to specify where your video is because I already named it as video.mp4 and it's reading video.mp4, but the original one you have to specify. So let's start just fire up the AI. And it's going to take around five minutes. Okay, actually that was shorter than I expected. It's already done. Let's see what's, what's made. So it's an interesting thing is you can watch the spectrum. Um, so here you see spectrogram classifier. Um, the programmer or researcher kindly wrote what's analyzing um, I mean, what is analyzed in there? So people marching and male speech and men speaking a little bit, female speech, roller coaster running, people running, child speech, well, oh. people farting. <laughs> Let's listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> it's 
so obscure. <laughs> but this model, I specifically made it so short. So, um, um, so it fits in the two hours workshop. The original ones, it takes much longer. Like you have to run it for like 30 minutes and you will have more quality sound. And now you learned how to run the school book lab. Maybe um, if you if you're ex if you want to explore more, you can go to original one and try that again. So now we have uh, this file that we can download. We, we have to uh, manually download it. And then final stage we are going to go to is putting it in a DAW. Do you, do you say DAW? DAW? No. Um, the digital audio workstation. Uh, that is free. So we can just yeah, not, we, we don't get scared of using it like Ableton uh, when I open it on web. Uh, assignment four that's the last assignment we have 20 minutes left uh, we can play with the sound output with a free dial um, band lab so band lab is like web-based software that it is free to use and you can add instruments like piano and drums um, and then you can look at it you get the sound like you do with ableton so let's go there so that is Oh, no. oh, yeah. So thank you for adding some sound or uh, I mean videos already. I was watching it before. I'm so on the page. <laughs> so funny. So cute. Yeah, you see it's not very realistic, but if you run it for long with the original one, it does get realistic. Oh, this one's not cool. Ah, beautiful. Caring for you is like tending a flower in the garden. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the resources page and go to sound to tell. That is spend lab. It's bandlab.com. Um, and I put all the resources in here. So in your free time after this workshop, you can try it out. So for audio production, Jukebox is uh, really the top tier. So you can make the original sound into the long format even, uh, or you can train um, or you are a big fan of Radiohead, for example, or you can fine tune uh, the, the, the data set of a billion of other sounds with Radiohead um, data sets. So it sounds like Radiohead, which we used actually in the performance that you saw earlier. In the performance, we wanted to uh, we wanted to make like a Radiohead Tom York voice, and we used that for multiple chapters, um, which which worked out really nicely. So we will go to BandLab now. And on the top corner, there is a create button. Oh yeah, you have to make an account, sorry. Yeah, you have to make an account. And you can just connect it to Google or Facebook or yeah, social media that you have. If you go to a new project, it's gonna prepare audio for me. And then I can import files straight away from there. So you're gonna see very basic right now, very basic of what you're gonna, um, um, things that you wanna do. Um, I will import the sound that I um, exported from, from from the Google Club, and I will see it here in this track. So normally, if you have made a video uh, with more details in there, like I showed you earlier, it's gonna make a more crisp sound with a long time with the jukebox. 
not like this short like we made right, right, right now. Yeah, very crisp. Yeah, um, the limitation of this is 10 seconds. So this model creates only 10 seconds. If, it's, if the video is longer than 10 seconds, then it cuts automatically. So um, I also specified what where to cut. You can specify that too. But this this sort of quality would take at least like one hour or two to create this amount of quality. Uh, but since we made it in short, now you see in the track, is everybody logged in? Let me see the chat. Oh, he didn't he didn't hear any farts. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, how to download the sound from Collab again. Yes, so we go back, let's go back. Here, if you're on Chrome, there's a button here. If you're on Safari, for example, I couldn't find the button. Does anyone know how to download the sound from Safari? But I don't know if anyone uses Safari here, but also Firefox has a button. You have to manually download it. Um, it's going to download it on your desktop somewhere. Yeah, you can right click on the audio here. Thank you. Oh, really? You can go to files. Ah, you mean in the files here? Ah, I see. Yes, it's there too. Then you can just click this one and download. So once you're in a band lab, uh, so my sound artist friend gave me advice what to do with this. So he said, first of all, I, she said, sorry, first of all, you examine the sound. So you have a look at the visualization and see or hear uh, what, what are there and uh, what you want to use. So I have this chirping sound. It was from another video that I made before. And then here you see a lot of space in between. I have to think whether I will use it or not. Um, or I might just duplicate this part so it, I, we can make a big gap between sounds. Or I just, just slice here and just copy and paste and make more bit spaced. Um, then you can decide by examining the sound, the, what they are. And what you can do is slicing, first of all, Okay, let's say I want to delete this part in the middle. Um, you go to keyboard S. Uh, you go to first um, the cursor, move the cursor to the place and then S. That means slice. So I slice this empty part and then now I delete it and put it together. So this is actually what I did for the video that I showed you in, um, in a meta video. I just chop, 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 and put them all together. And some of them can be audio stretched, faster speed or lower speed. If you right click, there are some options or there's more even, and you can go really fast. Or if you want to go back with Control Z, as always, uh, copy and paste is also Control C, Control V, or Command C, or Command V, um, and start with making it longer until like 
the 16. So copy this. So let's play with it for for a second. I will not play music because you have to listen to music. So if you have examined enough and play with the sound a little bit, we can add another track, which is a drum bit. <laughs> but you will hear, first of all, you will hear something terrible. I will show you. So if you go to the left side, there is like add track. And you can start with drum machine. That's the easiest uh, way, I think. And what I do is to get rid of the second part but you can just leave it there. And if you double click the drum machine, then there is this um, garage band like algorithm, which you can easily make the patterns here. So right now the first the default is terrible. <laughs> yes, it's quite uh, very generic and you can click things around to make some more obscure and if you go to the top um, and play this button then it's going to play everything and you can Lower it down. Mm -hmm. Oh no. And you can feel free to add one more track, which is virtual instrument. But um, if you are very um, beginner like me, it's nice to limit yourself with maximum three tracks, for example. So I play piano so I want to put piano in there I can record it with this button you can so play with your keyboard I'm sorry for the ear pol sound pollution um, but we can record it here so pl please play with it for a while in the meantime, I will add some links in our resources.
sorry if it bothered to your music. Um, I was watching through this create image and sound page and there was a sound for hamsters on the page. <laughs> Okay, you must be playing with this right now. Uh, but since we have like five minutes left, um, I would like to show you how to export. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. So if we go to file and download and mix down as, then you can download the entire thing, but you can also download separately in different tracks. So then you can just download on your desktop and uh, combine it with video, for example. So that's how it works. Um, it's a very basic um, sound production. And I'm not an expert or sound artist, but it's it just works sometimes um, to start something, um, to, to start a little sound for your visuals. I hope it was helpful for some of you. Um, and if you have any questions, this is your time. Please, please um, ask away. Oh, thank you so much. I will stop sharing so I can see you all a bit bigger. Mm. Oh. Ah, there are 21 of you. Do you then just use a video, video editing software to combine audio and video? Yes. So there is this open source, not open source, but free software called DaVinci da Vinci Dissolve. Uh, let me check if it's correct. Uh, because I used Premiere, but I have to teach people who don't have Adobe. And I think it's it's the best to start with open source software. Um, unlike me, I started with Adobe software. I can't stop using it. So. Ah, da Vinci Resolve, sorry. I will also put it in our resource folder. Ah, thank you, um, I'm reading messages. I'm, I'm very glad that it helped. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I was worried that it might be too easy for you, but um, for me, I always worry <laughs> when I make, when I start something that's completely new, of course, it's a bit scary, uh, but in this way, you can easily start. Um, I hope it helps, yeah. Um, Oh, yes, please, um, just speak away, please. Hello, so Yun, yes. can you hear me? Yes, yes. Um, thank you so much for this uh, session, it's so helpful. Um, I have a question. So first of all, can you adjust the parameter, uh, parameters in the um, VQGAN? so that it can give you an audio of the same length as the video. Uh, you mean combining these two sketches? Um, like, um, yes, like, um, like, first of all, like the, I, what if I, I hope that the audio it gives me, it's of the same length, like, same amount of time as the video I put in. 
Oh, yeah, there's a limitation of this. Um, it's actually only 10 seconds, unfortunately. Oh, so you mean, yeah. okay. So, so is there a limitation for this algorithm? Yes, yes, it's a limitation of this algorithm. Who made this algorithm? Um, I, I don't know reason actually, but um, this is why this can be used as a little source than the music. Um, so, and you can specify which part of your video that you want to cut and use for the sound. So if your video has something happening in the minute of one or something, then you can specify that in the audio spec, spec on um, model. So then you know what's happening there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then my second question is, um, is because we added extra like we 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 can use drum machines in band lab and we we can add piano yeah. and other tracks yeah <laughs> um i i was wondering if if there are other algorithms that can um add muse or extra stuff um automatic like for us so it's more ai involved instead of just uh we add what we want i mean of course what we want can sound better, but I was wondering what that would look like. Um, so it, I'm just wondering if there op if that um, there is an option for that. Yes, definitely. So that's gonna take some time, but Jukebox can do that. Um, I think I put it in the link of the resources. Uh, let me check it. Yeah, so if you go to video and audio, uh, no, audio production, there is a jukebox and there's a jukebox community Discord server. And you can go there and check out what the latest models they have created. And some people made it super, super easy to use. So you can fine tune, which is like training more on top of the billions of data they already have. Um, or there is like um, one click notebook that I put it in as YouTube and it's a really nice nice explanation that you can put your file in there and ask it to extend it but it's gonna take like maybe like two hours or something the audio AI tools are a bit slower than the video I will say um, yeah, so if you oh, okay. look at this, yeah, there is like collab notebook links and you can follow this video. It's amazing. I also have used it to extend the 10 seconds of it. So, yeah. Um, oh, thank you very much for answering because for, uh, for, I am a musician, so I, I'm more <laughs> curious about the, the like AI and audio side. And I was surprised when you, uh, mentioned that the audio AI tools are a bit slower. So thank you very yeah. much for sharing. No problem. I've been trying a lot to use the audio AI. Um, I even thought about releasing like entire album with it, but it just, it didn't work out for me uh, because it's contained a lot of noise and to process it, it was taking so long and there were models that you can put even subtitles, I mean, uh, the text in it, but it was not as clear as uh, those ones that you can buy uh, from text to speech models. So uh, I will recommend um, if that's the case, then you use a different model called, um, I know one one, Murph, that is AI voice generator. It doesn't sound like AI at all, but it's a paid version. Um, um, but you can also change the parameters of the voices changing. Um, we, you can make it even more like may I like or uh, very obscure or eerie. I will put that also in the resources. So if you want to try it out, uh, this is what we used for the performance. And the juicy jukebox, it's, it's relatively easy. You can put your lyrics, although it never really worked out for me very, very well. But you can put the lyrics, of course, and an audio file. Um, 
uh, in the same way as you copied the file and right click, mm -hmm. copy and paste. And then if you run it, it's going to take some time, but uh, you can play with it for sure. And um, if you use it a lot of times, I will recommend buying Google subscription model, which is a bit expensive, but for a month, it's okay, like 50 euros. You run a lot, so you can run it for like three days and you can just close it. Right now we are free user. If we close it, we lose it, lose the connection, I mean, but if you have subscription model, it goes on. So you can just go out and do something else, for example. Thank you so much. No problem. We have a couple questions um, in the chat. And I think maybe we should probably like wrap after these two. How are you feeling, so you? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, let me check. Uh, would your notebook work with an image tool as it's only nine seconds? I haven't tried with an image. Maybe you can try. <laughs> let, let us know if it works out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're downloads today with NVQCon or onto our Google Drive or onto our hard drives. In other words, would you recommend the installing anything again? Oh, if you disconnect it, uh, you mean the uh, VQCon, the model with all the data set, if you disconnect it, it's gone. If that's what you asked. So it's if you good. close the tab, it's gone. Yeah. Huh. Another question, conceptual question. How do you decide to which degree embrace AI as a creative force and when to start editing and use your human creative power to shape the work? <laughs> Thank you, Karina, for the question. Yeah, this topic is what I think these days a lot like almost every day since I also have discussion with children and I ask very difficult questions to them so like who is the artist of the work <laughs> and they give quite creative answer they had like good opinions um which degree embrace <laughs> Let me think. So in my creative pro process, uh, the output, the final output is never directly from the tool. So I love working with technology. I love working with augmented reality uh, or video gaming or um, sensors, but the output is never the default. So I would like my work to be not taken away by the technology um which means that i research more about that technology uh, what it means to have that or what it how is it relating to our world um, rather than uh, being such cool technology so it's always um yeah i try to really think what ai means to us and it's it's my just discussion in my head every day. Um, so most of the time, it's not just the output from the algorithm, but I try to engage it with a context. Thank you. <laughs> I hope it answered. Well, uh, thank you so much, Soyun. I personally thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, and I'm sure the rest of the community did as well. I think we're going to wrap, but um, stay tuned for more um, great, great events coming up soon from AIX Design. And uh, yeah, make sure you follow So You in socials. Um, I'm sure she has plenty of great things coming up soon. Do you want to plug anything that you're working on or any events? So yes. Mm -hmm good opportunity. So I have this one project that I would like, love to introduce, maybe connected to the topic of uh, critical, critical thinking. Um, next year, early next year, I will start a project called 
homegrown interdependence is homegrown interdependence so it's independence and interdependence um, it is about increasing or encouraging our digital um, independence so uh, recently i've been seeing a lot of uh, problems on cloud so um, we are relying on a lot of Amazon servers or Google Cloud or everything on this large corporates. Um, and I find it quite dangerous and I am scared and I would like it to, I would like us to be independent. So um, I will build a tool with my small team uh, that increases the, the independence um, in the digital society. So it'll be like a set of tools that you can make at home. So that's why it's homegrown. So it has to be simple and cheap and accessible. So starting off by building your own server yourself, uh, very simple one that you can hold your memories in there without any um, surveillance or like collection of data uh, from oh, these wow. big companies, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's really a quite cool. exciting project. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, much to look forward to. Um, thank you again so much. Um, I guess we're going to leave it at that, folks. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, so It was such a great workshop. Uh, I'll just plug in a little bit here for the AIX design. This was our last uh, of the series this year. Uh, and unfortunately, it was not on gather. But anyway, Soyun really took over and she did a wonderful job. So it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but for any of you who've been coming uh, to the workshops regularly or would like to contribute to the uh, exhibition, like the graduation show, as, as we are calling it, please connect with us uh, either directly to AIX Design Instagram or to me. We'd be really excited to see what you guys have been up to. And don't worry about it looking polished or finished because it's really about the playground. And the playground is about having fun and playing and falling and doing things together and, you know, like getting a scrape on your elbow and enjoying yourself. So just share what you, what you can and what you'd like to and uh, come together as a community uh, for this kind of wonderful, exciting thing that VIX Design has been doing for the last year. Thank you. Thank you everyone for inviting us and staying here until late night or um, in the afternoon. Thank you so much. And um, just please feel free to send me something if you have made it through our workshop and follow AIX Design, please. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye.